In this video, you will learn these 10 essential things to do after installing Garuda Linux. I assume you have followed the Garuda Linux setup assistant and have done the minimal configuration for your system. But if you do these additional 10 things after installing Garuda Linux, you can configure your Garuda Linux even better. Let's get started. And we will start with configuring time shift. One of the advantages of Garuda Linux is its battery fast file system with snapshots, so you can create snapshots of your system at different time points, and revert any changes if something goes wrong during the update or if you misconfigure your system. That's why I recommend you to configure time shift before you do any of the things to do after installing Garuda Linux that you will see in this video. So when you launch time shift, it should start the setup wizard automatically. If it doesn't, just click on this button and make sure you have battery fast file system selected here. Then you click next. Select the hard drive where your system is installed. Decide how often you want to create snapshots. For example, you can make them daily. I do it every third day or you can make them weekly. It's up to you. Click next. Also here, follow the recommended settings and enable battery fast groups. And now the setup is finished. So time shift is configured. Also, you can create a system snapshot manually. Just click on this create button and the system snapshot is created. And I recommend you also to name this snapshot so you know this is the state of your system before you apply any things to do after installing Garuda Linux, which you will see in this video. If something goes wrong, you can always go to this snapshot, click on it, click the restore button and you will restore your system to the state before you apply any of the configurations you will see in this video. So you are safe to go. Install drivers. This is my second essential thing to do after installing Garuda Linux, because some of your hardware may require proprietary drivers or it works better with proprietary drivers. You can easily install drivers with Garuda Settings Manager. To open it, open Garuda Welcome screen or just go to the menu and search for Garuda Settings Manager. Then open it and here you will see hardware configuration button. Just click on it and you will see what drivers are available for your system. For example, in my case, I have open source drivers installed, but I can also benefit from installing NVIDIA proprietary driver. And to install it, I just need to click on this auto install proprietary drivers button. And in about a minute, I have NVIDIA proprietary drivers installed on my system. Unfortunately, this tool doesn't work on all Garuda editions, Right now I am using Garuda Dragon Ice Edition and it works very well in this system. But if you use some other flavors of Garuda Linux, often this automatic driver installation fails, as I have shown in my Garuda Linux review. So in that case you would need to do the manual installation. And we provide the manual installation in the blog post version of this tutorial, which you can find in the description of this video. Improve AUR download speed. You have configured the mirror list for the official Garuda Linux repositories when you did the initial setup of your system. But unfortunately, this mirror list does not affect the AUR repositories. So you need to do some additional steps to also configure your AUR repository for the fastest mirror. And to do that, you just need to open the terminal and open the file with sudo micro atc pacman.d chaotic mirror list. Click enter, then your password. And here you can read the instructions which says that you can comment most of these mirrors here and keep only the one which is the closest to your location. So I am going to comment the first mirror, but it's important to keep the CDN mirror open as it says here, except CDN mirror. I will keep the Netherlands mirror list open because this is the closest to my location and comment all other mirror mirrors out. So you just need to select the mirror which is closest to your location while commenting out all the other mirror list except for the CDN mirror. mirror. After you have done that, click Ctrl S which is the save option for micro editor and Ctrl Q to exit micro editor. Now you just need to refresh your system, sudo pacman sy and you are done. So the most important here that your chaotic AUR mirror list is refreshed. So now you will be downloading AUR packages with a mirror which is closest to your location and it is supposed to be faster than the default mirror. Enable Firewall. 
As I explained in my video on Linux Firewall, Linux Firewall is not a must-have, but it is highly recommended, because it makes your system more secure. And as I always say, it is better to be safe than sorry. So I recommend you to enable Firewall in your Garuda Linux. It, I think it depends on the edition of Garuda Linux, but in my edition I have UFW Firewall installed, so I will enable it. And to do that you just need to type sudo UFW and enable. Enter your password, so firewall is activated and enabled on system startup. You can also check its status. It has the default rules to deny incoming connections and allow outgoing connections, which is fine for most users. But if you use some of the programs which require open ports for incoming connections, for example such as KDE Connect, you need to open that port in your firewall application. I show how to do that in my firewall dedicated video, which I will leave in the description of this video. Enable Trim for SSD. Trim improves the performance of your Linux system and it also extends the lifetime of your SSD drive, so it is better to have it enabled. I was surprised it is not enabled in Garuda Linux by default. Please correct me if I am wrong in the comment section under this video. To do that you open the terminal and type sudo systemctl enable fstream.timer Click enter, type your password and then you can also check the status. As you can see it is activated, now your SSD performance will be a little better. Install Microsoft Fonts. I know that many of you are not fan of Microsoft, but most likely you will still have to deal with Microsoft Fonts, especially if you receive documents created in Microsoft Windows. You can easily install Microsoft Fonts in your Garuda Linux thanks to the Arch User Repository, AUR. And to do that you just need to open Software Manager and search for TTF MS Fonts. So here it is and install this package. After the installations the fonts will be available on your system. If you open LibreOffice and go to the fonts you will find Microsoft fonts such as Arial, Comic Sans and Times New Roman available on your system. So now you will have more compatibility with Microsoft Office produced documents and you can also utilize these fonts for your documents. Enable Nightcaller. Nightcaller is an application which reduces the amount of blue light on your screen at night, which is better for your eyes and it also helps you to fall asleep easily. You just need to go to the settings and type Nightcaller. Here it is and you just need to enable. You can also regulate how much warm you want to have on your screen but I believe the default settings are fine for most of the users. Then you click apply and if you want to disable this feature you can go to your system tray and it is available here. So you can turn it off and turn it on. Very useful feature. Disable group delay. When you boot your Garuda Linux you always see this group menu and you need either to press enter or wait 5 seconds before the boot process starts automatically. We can disable this delay completely or reduce it to 1 second, which I recommend you to do. And we can easily do it with Garuda Welcome application. If we open it, here you will see Garuda boot options. Just click on it, enter your password to open it, and here at the very top of this application you see the timeout of 5 seconds. You can set it to 0, but I recommend you to use just 1 second, just in case if you still need to go to that boot menu and boot for example in a safe mode. Then just click apply. After you reboot your system, you will see that your boot process is a little faster. Now we can also clean our system a little bit. In Garuda there are three places which you can use to clean your system. One of them you have probably seen, it is located here and it is called System Cleaner. I would use it only if I am desperate for space and I need to clean my system. Otherwise I recommend you to go to this Garuda Assistant and here you can click remove orphan packages. So these are some of the dependencies which are not used by any of the packages installed in your system because you remove them. So it is very useful to clean these orphan packages from time to time. Just click on this icon, enter the password and Garuda Linux will perform the cleaning if there are any orphan packages available in your system. You can also clean package cache. Every time Garuda installs programs on your system it downloads its source code and stores it on your system. 
and with time you can accumulate a lot of those packages which take quite a lot of space but they are completely safe to remove because Garuda will automatically redownload re them when it stalls the program if you need it again for example. So click clear package cache. As you can see no candidate packages were found. So my system is clean, it is almost freshly installed system, that's why there are no many packages to remove. And this is the only options I recommend you to do if you want to clean your system. But again, if you are desperate for space, you can also use system cleaner. But you need to be very careful because it removes a lot of things here. So just be careful, go through all the settings and make sure you clean exactly what you want. For example, you can accidentally clean passwords in your Firefox or in some other browsers and you may not want to do that. So be very careful, go through every option and make sure you understand what you are doing so it is safe to clean it. But if you are not sure, just keep those files. You can also check your system for errors, but this is optional thing to do and it is a little bit more advanced level. Unfortunately Garuda Linux often has some problems, so I recommend you to check these errors and make sure you don't have any crucial errors. And to do that you just need to open the terminal and check these two commands. The first one sudo systemctl failed. So check if any of the processes failed to load on your system. For example in my case I have problem with Bluetooth but this is expected because I am recording this video with a virtual box. When I run Garuda Linux on my real hardware I don't have this problem and Bluetooth works as expected. So nothing is crucial here. And the second comment I recommend you to check is journal CTL with option P3 XB. And if you run this comment most likely you will see some errors. I'm sure you will do. But don't get scared, most of these errors may not be crucial for your system. Just check them and see if there is something what you expect to work correctly but it doesn't work. As I said in my Garuda Linux review, I believe Garuda Linux installed too many packages in one distro and there are always conflicts and there are always errors. So I believe this is more or less normal state of your system. But again, check all these errors and if you see that something is obviously out of order, then you need to google and see how to fix that error. But I'm not going to use Garuda Linux as my daily driver as I explained in my Garuda Linux review, that's why I'm not going to fix any of these errors. I hope these 10 things to do after installing Garuda Linux little improved your Garuda Linux. If you are wondering about my opinion on Garuda Linux, watch my previous video on Garuda Linux review which you see on your screen. Thank you for watching.